Again, I appreciate everyone uh, joining us uh, for this Wednesday night, uh, both uh, devotional and, and uh, Bible class. I am, of course, engaged in a study of uh, logic, logic in the Bible, and uh, we started uh, last week, but uh, what I will be doing primarily is using a uh, introductory logic uh, textbook, or if you will, uh, logic for Christian and home schools. And it's about as basic as you can get in a study of logic, but I will also be referring to other uh, logic textbooks. I'll be using Brother uh, Warren's Logic in the Bible uh, volume also, but uh, some other uh, books that are primarily written. All these, except Brother Warren's book, are written by uh, denominational people, so uh, there's some caution to be exercised there when they start talking about um, biblical uh, biblical things. So but we'll uh, get into that. Yeah, Brother Warren, of course, has a, uh, a definition of lock, logic, which is the, uh, the right the thinking to arrive at the right conclusions. And uh, he says it's the study of argument, not quarrels. You know, we'll get into that, talking about study of arguments and quarrels. So we'll uh, go into uh, primarily the workbook, but also what the Brother Warren has to say as well. Before we do that, though, let's have a, a short word of prayer. Spare with me, please. Heavenly Father, we ask thou bless the study of uh, thy holy volume and the logic that it presents to us, not only the, the logic of what thou hast said uh, explicitly, explicitly, but what thou intended to imply. We pray, Father, that we may infer only what thou hast in, implied, and may we recognize, Father, that the implications are just as valid as the explicit statements. So be with us as we engage in this study. Bless us in the study of right things. And we pray, Father, that we may always come to the proper conclusion of those things that thou would have us to know. We thank thee for Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. If Brother Warren will say that uh, uh, study of logic is um, uh, you know you have to study implication and inference if you're going to come up with a good uh, lesson on on logic. So, so why is this important? Uh, logic in general and implication in in particular. Well, if you look at the uh, people who have uh, denominations, people or even those unfaithful of the church who have spoken on this topic that don't want to use the Bible as a pattern, they uphold, they have to uphold irrationality. And they don't believe there's any uh, relevant connection between uh, evidence in conclusion, and we'll eventually get into syllogism where there's a major and minor premise. And I know you've heard of this before, major and minor premise, premise but those premises are evidence. And uh, the conclusion uses those evidence to arrive at a, a proper conclusion. So we'll talk about uh, valid syllogisms and invalid syllogisms. And just because a syllogism is valid doesn't mean it's uh, it's true. And there's a lot of valid syllogisms that are just not true. And we'll get into that later. later. But I wanted to go over uh, an example that uh, Brother Warren uh, gave in his book. 
And uh, let me see the, the footnote on it, where it's taken from. It's taken, it's by uh, somebody name of F. L. Limley. And he talked about the pattern concept. And it's an article that appeared in the Firm Foundation in 1974. I don't know who this guy is. I don't know if he uh, included this article in order that somebody might uh, refute it or was, you know, um, a serious attempt to attack the uh, pattern concept. But he uh, has this to say and you know, give a note to it. This is Lemley talking. The New Testament pattern ends where Revelation ends. That is where the specific mandate ends. And by mandate, he means explicit teaching. And where God allows human judgment to take over. Anytime we have to go beyond the limits of the specific revelation or mandate, if you will, uh, to infer, <clears throat> deduce, and go through a process of reasoning to make a uh, reach a conclusion, well, that's human <clears throat> and can be no part of the divine pattern to be bound upon our brethren as a term of communion. <clears throat> You can see where he's going with this. <clears throat> where the word ends, the pattern ends. <clears throat> now, these liberals uh, of old and today don't want there to be a pattern in the New Testament because if there is a, is a pattern, <clears throat> it'd be expected that people follow it. And if there is just one pattern, then everyone uh, alike will follow that same pattern and be alike. He says, uh, where the word ends, <clears throat> the pattern ends. And we, you know, he'll say what, where the word ends. And at this point, human judgment takes over. <clears throat> no command can be ex executed without the use of human judgment. But our inferences, deductions, and long processes of reasoning are not part of God's pattern, even if our conclusions are correct. <clears throat> and Brother Warren goes on to say the same writer made another false statement. <clears throat> One thing I want you to note uh, in listening to what this guy wrote, he's uh, objecting to uh, reason or logic in ascertaining Bible authority. He's saying, you know, where if it's explicitly stated, then we follow that. If it's not, it's just all human judgment. But he's using, he's trying to use logic to show that logic can't be used, which is uh, nonsense. <clears throat> uh, Brother One goes on to say this. Uh, same writer made another false statement that any time a process of human reasoning or deduction has to intervene between the word and the conclusion, <clears throat> the conclusion is human and not divine. You know, we gave an example uh, uh, last week about uh, where the uh, Jews had posed a question to Jesus about a woman that had seven husbands and want to know uh, that she finally died. They all died and she finally died and said, who's she going to be in, in heaven? <clears throat> if that's all that was said, if Jesus didn't go on to say that, you know, you, you should have understood what that really meant, the implication of what that meant. If this guy, uh, he'd probably say, well, since Jesus went ahead and explained it, then that's explicit. But Jesus is saying that they should have understood it before he said it. So they should have had uh, understood the implication before he told them what it was. But he says, uh, 
if human reasoning or deduction has to intervene between a word and a conclusion, the conclusion is human and not divine and therefore cannot be, even when it's true, a part of the New Testament pattern. <clears throat> Well, he's uh, denying what uh, is uh, really implied by God's explicit statements in, in the Bible. Uh, you know, explicit statements imply something, and it's our duty to infer exactly what is implied. And uh, the human mind is capable of doing that. You know, I, this guy apparently doesn't think so. So, uh, you know, God is omniscient. He's all-knowing. He knows how we're made because he made us. And uh, he knows uh, what his explicit statements implies, and he knows that we can understand, uh, we can infer what he implied. So uh, the guy is just uh, off his uh, rocker. He, this guy goes on to say uh, say another statement by the same writer is, quote, unquote, indeed, we do have a basic pattern, but an, not a detailed pattern. I just got, thought he got through saying you couldn't have a pattern. <clears throat> if we should observe that our pattern ends where the word of God ends, and that no human inference or deduction and no conclusion from human common sense is a part of, of the pattern. Our problems would be diminished. Well, how did he, how does he know that problems be diminished? Uh, he's making an assertion of which he has no proof. Human inference, uh, deduction, or common sense should not be bound as part of the divine pattern. Well, if you're talking about human thinking, uh, or think so, that may be so, but when you're trying to infer what God implied, that's not the case. <clears throat> I said, uh, human inference, deduction, or common sense should not be bound as a part of the divine pattern, for those things are subject to many variations. Well, where does he come up with that? How does he know there are many var variations? He doesn't say. He said, God surely would not leave any essential command or essential doctrine to human judgment. Well, he doesn't. And depend on the ingenuity of man to discover it under pain of condemn condemnation. Well, you know, man's intellect certainly must be uh, employed. But how does he know it's... it's uh, all on the basis of human ingenuity. He's used, tries, trying to use his ingenuity to say that you can't use human ingenuity. And uh, he goes on to say there's another statement by the same writer is uh, one of the principles of the Refor Reformation movement was that it is the right and duty of every man to read and interpret the scriptures for himself. Well, how are you going to do that without uh, ascertaining what, uh, infer what God implied by the explicit statement? I uh, said, if this be true, then God surely will not condemn us if my common sense interpretation, interpretations differ from your common sense interpretations. And because of that, there must be uh, rules of, uh, Interpretation hominetics must be uh, uh, not hominetics, but uh, ability to ascertain what the Bible actually teaches. Otherwise, and as is, as is the case, uh, what people consider to be biblical doctrine is all over the board. <clears throat> if God gives us freedom of judgment, then we may say with confidence that we have no freedom at all unless we have freedom to err in this uh, judgment. 
Well, we do have the freedom to uh, uh, err for sure, but that doesn't mitigate against the necessity of uh, inferring what uh, God has implied. And he still goes on to say that uh, the same writer uh, in the firm foundation said, since all inferences are of human origin, Again, he's making an assumption. Uh, we infer what God implied. God's implications are divine in origin, not human origin. So since all inferences are of human origin, unless we want to hold on to human patterns, we should discard necessary inference as poor pattern material. But he's stating a pattern here that he wants us to follow which is that we shouldn't uh, infer what God implied because that would, uh, that would be a poor pattern material. He goes on to say, only those examples that are the objects of a direct command are binding on us. Well, of course, uh, it's been asked many times, where's the direct command that says that only those examples that are the objects of direct commands are binding on us. Is there a direct command stating that? Or is he trying to infer it from uh, his own think so? <clears throat> now, a different writer in the same journal as the uh, firm foundation says no quote unquote matter of faith is a matter which men have to deduct, infer, conclude or that's derived by the use of complicated logic and the wisdom of men. Well, we're trying to ascertain the wisdom of God, not the, the wisdom of man, but the man uh, may have to use his own wisdom to uh, come up with that. So what is this, uh, some errors in this uh, particular uh, uh, man's thinking. Well, he denies the uh, law of rationality that we should only conclude those things that are supported by adequate, uh, adequate uh, evidence. So, and we all think. We all think. And what we're, what we're trying to do with this class is to be able to, to think correctly. That is, uh, to come to a logical and valid and, and sound uh, conclusion as to what something is saying. So, but we have a lot of these people that uh, they, they uh, suppose themselves to be uh, very wise individuals, uh, deep thinkers, and, and so so forth. But in, in doing so, they, they uh, arrive at uh, conclusions that are just absolute nonsense. That's not the way humans uh, uh, arrive at any sort of conclusion about anything. And we'll, we'll get into that how, uh, and we do it all the time. Uh, we, we use logic to arrive at uh, conclusions warranted by, the, warranted by the evidence all the time. We may not think of it in a formal way, and, and we're going to get into a formal way, but but we do that. Do that. So, anyways, we'll. That's one thing. One problem with the the uh, uh, these comments by these individuals and in that firm foundation article of so long ago. But some other problems with what was uh, said. Uh, by uh, this individual, uh, the primary one in particular, he claims that only which uh, that which is taught explicitly, an explicit an explicit statement is is just so many words, and uh, it says no more than those words say. And they say that 
if it's not explicitly stated, then it can't be binding on man today. That is as false as false can be. Another uh, claim of, of this individual, or primarily one individual, is that uh, nothing which is taught implicitly, um, which it, it uh, requires men to exercise their uh, power of ratio, uh, radiocination. And radiocination is, it's uh, easier to say when you say it real fast, but radiocination is nothing more than thinking logically. So it uh, requires men to exercise their powers of radiocination in deducing or inferring the implication of the explicit statements. And uh, it says that it, uh, nothing that it taught in, implicitly is or can be binding on men uh, living today. And we'll, we'll have some examples about that. Uh, for, for example, uh, Jesus says, or the Bible says, uh, for all men to repent. Well, you have to go beyond, you know, logically you have to go beyond that because it implies something that implies that, of course, all men, that it implies women as well. And to repent, uh, that uh, means that there's something of which, which one has to repent, and there's a method, there's implied a method by which one may repent, but it doesn't say that explicitly, it said that you have to repent. <clears throat> uh, so we have to use our powers of radiation to uh, think about these things. And one, another thing that is in, uh, implied or inferred by these uh, individuals then uh, is that nothing taught by an account of an action and uh, Brother Warren always calls it a, an account of an action and sometimes you know, we refer to it as a uh, uh, an example or an approved example uh, nothing taught by an account of an action is or can be binding on men living today well, where's the explicit statement for that? There, there is none. <clears throat> Another thing that's uh, inferred by what these guys are saying is if the uh, position under analysis is true, what these guys are, are saying, then it would uh, forbid the uh, preaching which the Bible enjoins. In fact, it would uh, forbid us having this class tonight. We cannot have this class if what the, these uh, two individuals, one primarily, if what they say is true. We can't have the class because in conducting the class, we will be implying something in which we expect uh, the audience to infer. In fact, nobody can preach the gospel. You, you, you can't preach the gospel but without some implication. All you could do really is I suppose is just uh, you know get up in in the pulpit and and uh, read the Bible because that would be an explicit statement. You could not give the uh, context of it or the implication of it. Uh, you know Deuteronomy twenty eight twenty eight kind of puts a, a lie to that. But anyway, you you can't. Uh, uh, or I should say uh, Nehemiah 8, 8 you, you can't uh, explain somebody what the, the, the scripture says uh, because you would be trying to imply something and you expect the audience to infer it. You could only read the, uh, uh, the, the uh, Bible. So and, and as we pointed out, you know, you know that's another problem with uh, these things that were said is that they contradict 
both themselves. You could see that, you know, we've been exposed to this enough that we know that what they're saying, it contradicts themselves. And of course, it contradicts the Bible also. And you have to be careful about the uh, uh, people. And, and, and of course, when we get the denominational writers, uh, you have to be careful of that too, because people will use sophistry to persuade you to adopt their own way of thinking and not not what the Bible actually says. But one of the problems uh, is that there are no explicit statements in the Bible which explicitly say, say that only explicit statements have binding force on men living today. And we've been saying that uh, a number of times uh, uh, and, and we'll say it probably more times than that. And uh, so we need to be well aware of that and in fact many times in the in debate you know even those taking a contrary view to the bible will uh, state things that imply certain other things and a few will again attack the bible as this these individuals have done to say that uh, the Bible can only be taken explicitly, whereas in their own argumentation they'll state things that are uh, can be taken um, uh, by implication. <clears throat> so what is what is uh, let me uh, if I can. Uh, let me see here if I can uh, get my share screen on. Uh, I'm assuming everybody can see that. It, it starts off with the logic is a study of uh, right and reason. And this is just uh, one of them uh, among a number of other um, definitions of, of uh, logic. And this author says logic is a study of right reason or, or reasoning rightly, reasoning correctly, comes to the, to the proper conclusion. So that's the main point. Logic is a study uh, we're ordering things of how to think rightly or how to find truth. And of course, that means you have to understand uh, implication. So we might say that logic is a way uh, to think so that we come to correct, uh, correct conclusions. And I say uh, inferring what's what is implied is a is a very important aspect of uh, the study of logic. And logic is the study of right reason or valid inferences. Uh, that means implications. We must infer what God has implied. So a part of studying logic is recognizing when A implies B and when it does not. Uh, and, and we'll get into some rules as to help with this. And it goes on to say logic uh, is uh, also study of the attending fallacies formal and informal. We don't need to get into that, all that right now, but except to say that we will get into formal and informal fallacies. The fallacy is just a mistake. Uh, you know, this, these guys that uh, wrote these articles, they were engaged in fallacies, and we need to be able to recognize those fallacies. And, uh, sometimes uh, you say we make mistakes in the way that we set up our thinking or by using the implication that is not true. That, that happens quite often. And these are called formal fallacies because they have to do with the form of their argument. And when we get into syllogism, we'll cover that more completely. 
other times mistakes are in the meanings of the terms and we must be uh, careful about the definition of terms and we'll get into that too a little bit later so these uh definitions or terms meanings that might be unclear incomplete misleading not defined properly it could be a whole host of reasons that they're unclear or misleading but that could uh, uh, lend itself to a, to a fallacy or they might uh, just not have anything to do with the subject at hand we could be talking about something else altogether when we're in a uh, discussion shall we say and mistakes like these are called informal fallacy because they have nothing to do with the the argument that's being uh, uh, dealt with so knowing the kinds of mistakes uh, uh, we can make uh, helps to avoid them we can study them and go over we'll go over enough examples that uh, hopefully we'll be able to to see uh, fallacies when they arise so this uh, author says if we pull out, put out all our paraphrases together, uh, we get a simplified definition. Logic is a way to think so that we can come to correct conclusions by understanding implications and the mistakes that people often make in thinking. So uh, I'm going to. go into well we have to do this next week some crucial definitions and this is brother warren's a crucial definition but i think it's important that we go over these but we'll have to go over these uh next time because we're out of time now so hopefully this will be a, a fruitful study you will never come to an end of study of logic if you if you want to do that uh, like i think david said there books and books and books on logic we're going to try to cover the uh, cover it the simplest way possible but we will cover a lot of ground in doing this and to really uh, incorporate it into your very uh, uh, base of knowledge you may have to go over this a um, number of times so thank you for your attention and we'll uh, begin this again next week